Okay, so this is the same exact circuit that we just did on the bleeder current and the voltage divider. This time we have a simulation software up and running and I want to show you some situations that occur. We've cheated a bit. The reason we cheated is I took 180 milliamps at 100 volts, the 40 volts at 54 milliamps, and the 18 volts at 36 milliamps, and I put those numbers in for resistors. And I came up with some very specific resistors. Here's the difficult thing. We don't care about the resistance values. Don't get hung up on it. What I care about is does that load C or 100 volts at 180 milliamps? Does it see 40 volts at 54 milliamps? And does it see 18 volts at 36? Anytime you have a load in the circuit that's running, we don't care about the resistance. You've taken so many college classes, we beat people over the head say, what's the resistor here? What's this resistor's value? I don't care about that. What I care about here is this. When we look at a voltage dividing circuit where we've got series of these three resistors, but they're parallel, current flows, they're in, here's what I need to know. We said very first rule was that the total current of the circuit is going to be the addition of all the loads. So 180 plus 54 plus 36 milliamps equals a total load current of 270 milliamps. Generally speaking, the bleeder current, which is the amount of current that has to run the entire circuit for it to work, is 10% typically of the load. So if I take a 270 milliamps times 10% of that, that's 27 milliamps. That should get me 297 milliamps, and yes, it does. That means I get 297 milliamps in this circuit. Now, as 297 milliamps leaves from the minus side of the power source, I go through this bleeder resistor. That bleeder resistor, we said, should have been 27 milliamps. And it is. How do I know it's 27 milliamps? Because on that circuit, and I showed you the 18 volts because I am looking across the top of this to the bottom of that, and that means I have 27 milliamps of current flow into this resistor. If I take 18 volts divided by 27 milliamps, that's where the 666 point and all the decimals after that. I just did that because in the real world, I don't give a rip about the resistance values. I give a rip about test point number one. If I called that test point number one right there, I would have read 27 milliamps of current flow and I would have read 18 volts across that point. That means the next current flow leaves, comes through this circuit right here. And I said that I had 18 volts at 36 milliamps. So at test point one right here, I have 36 milliamps plus the 27 milliamps of the bleeder. So if I had 36 plus the 27, I certainly hope I get a nice number of 63. I do. 27 plus the 36 is equal to 63 milliamps. So 63 milliamps now combine right here, flow through this circuit, and come up to this next point, test point 2. But what's the voltage that we're going to read at R3? The voltage that we're going to read right there should be 40 volts minus 18 for 22 volts. 22 volts. 40's on the top. Remember, this load says it's 40 on the top, 18 on the bottom. That gives me 22 there. I'm going to get out the teleprompter here in a minute. I'm going to overlay current flows for us to see why this became 22 volts. But I have 63 milliamps through there at 22 volts. That's where the 394.2 odd ohms came into play. And then finally, I have this last resistor, 100 volts up top, 40 volts on the bottom. That gives me 60 volts right there. 100 on top, 40 on bottom, 60 volts right there. How much current has to flow through there? I've got 27 through the bleeder, 36 for the first load, plus another 54 from the last one. So that should be 63 plus 54. And that gets me somewhere near 117 milliamps. So if I take 60 volts divided by 117 milliamps, that gives me the 512 uh, and whatever change that I have left over there. This is why we have to have our points of contact. Number one test point is right here. Number two test point is right there. I'm going to finish this up by looking at how the circuit behaves. Very first rule current leaves, goes through that first load right there of 100 volts at 180 milliamps. So load number one consumes 180 at 100 volts. No one has any problems by understanding that that is entirely in parallel with the 100 volts. 
Second issue that I have is let's look at the first point of contact where I've got a circuit, and that is this guy right here. Comes into this load, we call it R2, but it's really 40 volts. Now notice it comes up through that middle resistor. So there's one pathway in black that comes back, but in order for that to know how that works, I gotta have this pathway right here that goes through this guy, this guy, this guy. Notice I have 100 on the top because it's 100 volts here to here, but from this point here, I have 40 volts. So that means this poor resistor right here is feeling 60 volts of difference. I don't know the current just yet, but I know there's some bleeder current in red and that load of 40 volts and 54 milliamps through that. So I know for a fact that I've got two pathways through it. And then I have one more, and that is this guy right here. So I'll draw him in black again. He comes through this load, up through the 18 volt and 36, and he comes by, comes by, combines, combines, boom, and he's back right there. So let's look at this circuit right here. This guy right here, the bleeder, he only gets 18 volts. How much current? 10% of total load, which is 27 milliamps. How about R3? R3 has 40 volts on the top, 18 on the bottom. That gives him 22 volts that resistor is seeing. But how much current? It's seeing the 36 milliamps from this guy right here and the 27 milliamps from the bleeder. So that poor resistor feels 22 volts at 63 milliamps. How about this top guy now? Remember we said he saw the full 100 on the top, 40 on the bottom, that gives me 60, 60 volts, but how much current? I had 27 milliamps from the bleeder I had 36 milliamps from the 18 volt load. I had 54 milliamps of current from the 40 volt load. And when I add all of those up, that guy is going to see 117 milliamps. And so if I add 117 milliamps total, plus the 180 from that parallel load way out there at 100 volts, I do get 297 milliamps. There we go. So that equals the total current of this circuit. When I look at this again, points of interest. I want to know what's happening here at test point and there at test point. So we showed you how to run and circulate the circuit when it's in an operation with just resistors, but in the ideal, realistic world, we care about how it's behaving. 